तच्चुर्दीवितुक्रमुच्चरत पश्यम शरद शत जिभीम शरद शत शुनुयाम शरद शत प्रभवाम शरद शत अधीन श्याम शरद शत दौ शाति अंतरिक्ष शाति पृथ्वी शाति आप शाति ओषध शाति वनस्पत शाति विश्व देवा शाति ब्रह्म शाति सर्व शाति शांति देव शांति सामे शांति रेधी फ्रॉम द जुजुर्वेद वो लोड द वर्ड प्योर इन सेल्फ एफोर्जेंट टू एडोर दी मे वी लिव हैप्पीली फॉर हंड्रेड इयर्स मे आवर स्पीच आवर आईज आवर इयर्स मे ऑल आवर सेंसेस वैक्स क्लियर एंड जस्ट स्ट्रांग फॉर हंड्रेड इयर्स May we never be overcome by weakness. O Lord, whatever peace is in heaven and the sky, whatever peace dwells in earth and water, whatever peace resides in herbs and trees, whatever peace abides in God and Supreme Brahman, whatever peace can be found in all other things, may that peace come to us. May that peace come to us. O peace 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 be told <clears throat> this morning our subject is thoughts and the gita part 71 Today we shall start the eighth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Name of this chapter is Akshar Brahma Yoga. The way to the imperishable Brahma. As you know, there are eighteen chapters of the Gita. Each chapter is a step to the goal. In the last chapter, Krishna talked about the way to realization, and toward the end of that chapter, he mentioned about akshara, odibhuta, odidayiva, karma, odijegya. These are words I am going to explain to you. Krishna told Arjuna, "The people really want to know me fully. Then you will be omniscient." And I will be. the object of your meditation then you will think of me you love not 99% 100% love will come toward me then you will be one with me if you have this thing there will be no rebirth for you when the question arises in the eighth chapter we will find do you like to be born again that is the question do you want to be recycled in this world again and again as shankara says punarapi jananam punarapi marnam punarapi janani jatari shayanam yo samsare kholu dusare kripa pare paaye murade birth death pain suffering disease death again born birth death jis suffering disease death in this way 8400000 times we are born before we get this human birth but well, how do you know swami <laughs> it is in the puranas <laughs> any how really you like to be born or not if you want to be born create desires 
in a zoo life, innumerable desires, then you will come back again and again and again and again to fulfill your unsatisfied desires. That is the gospel truth. If you have no attachment, you will never come back. As I told many times, all these billions of human beings you see are rotating in these three places. You may be doctor, engineer, you may be Swami, whatever you may be. Avidya, Kamo, Karma. Shankara says, why do you have desire? Because you will be glorious. Why do you work? Because you have desire. You will never work if you do not have desire. It is desire forcing you to work. So this circle, ignorance, desire, action. Again, ignorance, desire, action. All these billions of people, we may live 80 years or 100 years, whatever years we may live, we are going into this circle, circle. No escape. But if you want to escape from this circle, you know this part of Brahman. Then you will be a drop of water, becomes one with the ocean, and becomes the ocean. This is the Vedantic way. In the beginning of this eighth chapter, Krishna, first I am asking, I am telling you what, what Arjuna says. It is his questions. This questions was raised by Krishna in his mind in the end of the seventh chapter. Arjuna Vacha. King Tad Brahma, King Adhyatma, King Karma Purushottama, Udi Bhutam Chakim Proktam, Udi Daivam Kim Uchati, Udi Jagyam, Udi Jagya Katham Kuatra, Dehusmin Madhusudana, Prayan Vakale Chakatham, Gyosi Nivatat Mavi. What is that Brahman? What is that Adhyatma? What is Karma? O best of persons, what is called Udibhuta and what is called Udidaiva? Who and in what way this is Udijigya here in this body? O destroyer of Madhu, and how are you known at the time of death by the self controlled persons? Six questions. I have six questions. Answer. First question is King Tad Brahma. Brahma ki. What is Brahman? Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Krishna answered. <clears throat> Aksharam Brahma Paramam, Sababu Adhatma Uchati, Bhuto Bhavad Bhavu Karu, Bishargha Karma Sangita. The Blessed Lord said, the imperishable is the Supreme Brahman, is dwelling in each individual body, is called Adhyatma. The offering in sacrifice which causes the genesis and support of being is called Karma. Let us start one by one. Aksharam. Kshara means decays, perishes. Akshara means imperishable, which never perishes. Whatever you see in this world is subject to destruction. Why? Always remember, creation must have a destruction. There is no exception to this rule. Whatever has been created, that will be destroyed. This body was created one day, this body will be destroyed. The building was created one day, this building will be destroyed. There is no escape to this rule. That is called aksharam. And akshara, it never, 
is subject to your structure. That is Brahma. Satchidananda, existence, consciousness, bliss. The question arose in Briyadaranda Gupanishad. Gargi asked Jagavalka, I have two questions. My first question is, I see this heaven and earth, this space, this universe. Who is holding? This whole universe. What is the source? Akasha, space. This space is holding this heaven and earth, ocean, mountain, everything you see. Space, space, space. Tell me, O Jagavalka, who is holding that space? Akshara. This Akshara Brahma is holding this heaven and earth, all these people, whatever you see, is holding by that Akshara, Supreme Brahman. What is that Akshara? I shall read to you a little bit from Vriyadharana Upanishad just to satisfy your curiosity. He, Jagavalka, used 22 negative words to mention what is Akshara. Asthula, Nanu, Arasama, Dirgama, Laitama, Shuklama, Krishnam. In this way, he went oh, 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 22 words. That means he destroyed all of your ideas and thoughts. What next? Infinite. Why the mind cannot reach? Let me read to you a little. O Gargi, the knowers of Brahman call the imperishable. It is neither gross nor subtle, neither short nor long, neither red nor moist. It is neither shadow nor darkness, neither air nor akasha. It is unattached. It is without taste or smell, without eyes or ears, without tongue or mind. It is non effulgent without vital breath or mouth, without measure and without exterior or interior. It does not eat anything, nor is it eaten by anything, eaten by anyone. O Gargi, the sun and moon are held in their respective positions under this mighty rule of the imperishable. Heaven and earth are held in their respective positions under the mighty rule of this imperishable. O Gargi, moments, minutes, Days and nights, fortnights, months, seasons, and years are held in their respective positions under this mighty rule of the imperishable. He went on and on and on. Do you know what he was talking about? He's talking about, do you see how the season changes? How the suns and moons are rotating? They are in just in perfect order. They never make mistakes. The sun never forgets to rise. But I have a little headache, I shall take rest today. The sun never says that to us. <clears throat> All these things, the air blows. If the air says, I am not going to blow today, I will let me one day vacation, we will all die. You know, there is a perfect something behind this whole universe is working. What do you say? Somebody was asking, could you explain to me what is God's grace? I don't really want to know God's grace. Do not breathe five minutes. Then you will understand what is God's grace. You will die. We are breathing this air. The President Obama did not create the air. We really, water, who created all these things? The way he explained the whole chapter is that how this behind this universe you see a great power is working and unperceptibly, you do not say it. We are so deluded, we are not curious to know about this mystery behind this creation, behind me, 
behind my thought. What is going on? <laughs> if thousands of years ago, this Upanishad tells us what is going on. Outside, inside. But this line he says, I like it. Listen, Gargi. Gargi was a woman. She was a rishi, woman rishi. Very learned. Whosoever departs from this world without knowing this imperishable is miserable. But he, O Gargi, who departs from this world after knowing the peri imperishable is a knower of Brahman. Verily, that imperishable is never seen, but is the seer. It is never heard, but is the hearer. It never thought of, but is the thinker. It is never known, but is the knower. There is no other seer but this. There is no other hearer but this. There is no other thinker but this. There is no other knower but this. But this imperishable Ogargi is the unmanifested Akasha is pervasion. Anyhow, it is a very interesting subject. He is the knower. In this body, who knows? You, do you think you know? No. It is that Atman is the knower, experiencer. But we do not know it. We think my ego, I am the knower. That is Brahman. Then Swa Bhabo. Adhatma Uchati. We cannot comprehend the infinite. So that's the infinite supreme Brahman manifested in human heart as the Atman, Adhatma. Vast space and this room space. Break these walls and the roof, it will be one with the space. So that the infinite consciousness and my little consciousness are the same consciousness. But my little consciousness is encased in this body mind organism. So it is limited, you know, by consciousness. But as consciousness, both are the same. That infinite becomes finite, Shagun Brahman. Then what does it do? Bishargo. Shargam is creator. Bish is to be creator. That Brahman manifests as Jiva and Jagat, this universe and beings. The infinite becomes finite through Maya power. That Maya power is in Skurujabu. So please listen, Krishna says to Arjuna, this is Brahman, because I promise to you, Dozun, I shall tell you everything about me. So he is telling everything about him. This is the Supreme Brahman. Next is Adhatmam, your Atman. And then your Karma. Karma. The force the propensity to create something in this world, that is karma. Desires, fulfilled. There is a tremendous power behind this karma. Without which karma, without our energy, power, we cannot do anything. That power is Brahman. That power is Brahman's power. Our own nature, if we know it, at the time of death, this becomes Gyo and Dheo. Gyo means to be known. Dheo means to be meditated upon. Krishna says that, you know, you really want to be liberated? This is the way I am telling you. 
And in this chapter, Krishna will tell us more about how to die. Preparation for death. This is another beautiful aspect of Vedanta philosophy. It takes, it talks about life, which is half of your life, and death also. You must know both. Then transcend both. The moment you are illumining Atman, you have no birth, no death. You are above. You are free. Karma is the various processes of producing and changing things in this world. There is one creation or projection at the beginning of the cosmic evolution. Within that evolution, there are so many other activities going on of creating, of shaping this and that. That is called Vishargo, based on karma or activity. The next verse, four, Odibhutam Kshara Bhavu the imperishable aspect of things is the Odibhuta. And the dwelling self is the Odidoiva. I alone am the Adhya Odijigya here in this world, O best of the embodied. Now, the moment we enter into the body, we have the Atman, we have to do work, action. Then comes two ways. That is, Odibhuta means matter, this body. Five elements. Odidoiva, energy, the subtle body, the power, energy, which, for, which works through the senses. That is Hiranyagarbha. So, I am Brahman. I am Adhyatma, Atman, I am Karma, I am the matter, I am subtle matter, I am the energy, I am consciousness, and I am Odi Jigga. Jigga by Vishnu, who I am God, who supervises everything. I am the supervisor of my own creation. This is my full form. In this body, who manages your affair, your antarjami, the enjoying self? That is God. Who manages your eyes, nose, your ears, your fung your body function? There is a manager of your body. As you have money in the bank, in the or in or somewhere you have a money manager or a, or a housekeeper. So who is the who manages your body? Who manages my body? Antarjami. Ishwar. That Krishna says, Ishwara Sarva Bhutana, no, Brahman Jantra Rani Mayaya. Ishwara Sarva Bhutana Mridhishi Yurjunati Shati, Brahman Sarva Bhutani Jantra Rani Mayaya. God dwells in the hearts of every human beings. And these human beings are rotate like a machine. Perhaps you have seen merry go round. The children sit on a deer or a lion or a cow or a horses, and you know they sit there, and this person rotates. And all these children are rotating after 10 circles or 20 circles. They come down, another batch gets, gets in. That is the way we see merry go round. So, all these billions of people are seeing in this world, they are just jumping on, the, on, the, on that vehicle. And God is rotating. You do your karma, I shall do my karma. Everybody is performing, functioning in this world. Actually, we are helpless. At the same time, God gives us ego. God gives us intellect, power of discrimination. He taught us what is right, what is wrong, 
Some people do not learn what is right, what is wrong. If you do wrong, you will be in jail. I'm just telling you that what is going on in this world, you must know. Odijigyam <laughs> is God, the divine reality. When you see it in a particular context, you will merely see jigya or fire, sacrifice. But when you look at it from a deeper perspective, you will find ultimately it means that infinite divine reality. Jigya. Actually, jigya means sacrifice. Sacrifice. We are all sacrificing all the time. We cannot help it. You are sacrificing your energy, time, for your family, for your wife, for your husband, for your children, for the society. President is sacrificing his time, energy, for doing good to this country. Everybody is sacrificing. Doctor is sacrificing. Everybody is sacrificing. That sacrifice, the person who sacrifices the most, the greatest, that person will be remembered. Christ. He sacrificed his life for the good of humanity. Ramakrishna, Vivekananda, Buddha. They are remembered all through the ages because of their greatest sacrifice. He only sacrificed this much, so that is all. Some people are very self-centered. Only my family, my wife, my children. He does not see anybody else in this world. When they die, nobody cares. You die. Those who help others, serve others, those people will be remembered because they are sacrificed. If Swamiji, if you read Swamiji Vivekananda's work, he emphasized this aspect again and again. Do something for others. Be unselfish. Then these are the five. So uh, we we discuss. We, he says five things. We know what is Brahman, imperishable, the infinite Brahman, Satchidananda. Then Atman, that Brahman manifested in this human being inside. Adhyatma, third, karma, fourth, odibhuta, the matter, then odidoiva, the consciousness. There is consciousness behind this creation. And odijegya, who manages the whole affairs, he is Vishnu, he is God. And now the next last question is, Prayano Kali, that is say, Prayano Kali upi chate chamam te vidu yukta jitasha. The self controlled people at the time of death, Prayano Kali means at the time of death. What happens to them? Now he's answering. Onta Kali chamami bas paran muktva kali varam ya prayati samadhavam yati nasyatra samshaya. And he or she who at the time of death meditating on me alone goes forth, leaving the body attains my being there is no doubt about this. At the time of death, those who think of me and give up their body, undoubtedly they will come to me. In the 12th chapter of the Gita, Krishna, sorry, yeah, Krishna mentioned, Mayi Vamana Adatsa, Mayi Buddhim Nivishaya, Nivasishasi Mayi Vamana Nasamshaya. Fix your mind in me. Hold me. Sometimes, do you know what happens? Our mind may touch God, but we do not hold it there. 
Buddhi Vinivesha, Buddhi is the teacher Miniki faculty. They call it Nishatmika Buddhi. This is this. That is the region of Buddhi. When the mind focuses, hold it there. Mui Buddhi Nivesha, then you will live in me. Do not doubt about it. These are the promises of Krishna in the Gita. He is going to promise here again. <laughs> ja prayati samadbhavam yati. When he departs at the time of death, meditating on me, there is no doubt about this. He reaches me. As I was telling a major newspaper recently, some people get confused. They think when problem comes, they cannot handle. What do they do? They commit suicide. The, in America, the most, impo <laughs> the most popular place to commit suicide is Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It was started in 1937. Hundreds and hundreds of people jump from that bridge and went 2,200 feet down on the bay and died. Now they are planning to put nets so that nobody could jump. They are trying to stop suicide from Golden Gate Bridge. That is not the way to die. Some people do not understand their karma. Your happiness and misery are determined by your own karma. Your present is the outcome of your past and your future will be outcome of the present. So do such thing right now, <coughs> at present, so that your future will be glorious. Successful, joyful, full of happiness. That is the way you are supposed to work. Karma. I am a great believer of law of karma. As you sow, so you reap. Start from today. Make a plan that this is the way I must go. This is my goal. <clears throat> Some people think that, let me enjoy. At the time of death, I shall think of God. <laughs> it is not so easy. <clears throat> Whatever one thinks that one becomes. I was in, in Japan. All Japanese marriage, who you remember, will be held in Shinto temple. And when they die, all the rituals will be performed in Buddhist temple. Because they think they are the easy way they will get nirvana. <laughs> Funny. Marriage will be in the Shinto temple, death will be in <laughs> Buddhist temple. <laughs> the Western outlook and Eastern outlook about death. We say that he gave up his body. And the Western people say he gave up the soul. <laughs> Just reverse. We think body is impermanent. We give up the, the soul has a body. And they think body has a soul. One is the materialistic outlook. Another is the spiritualistic outlook. Sri Ramakrishna's method, 
দুঃখ জানে আর শরীর জানে মন তুমি আনন্দে থাকো লেট দি মিজারি এন্ড দি বাজি টেক কেয়ার অফ দেম সেলস ও মাই মাইন্ড ইউ ডুয়েল ইন ব্লিস হাউ টু ডু ইট হাউ টু ডু ইট দ্যাট ইজ দি কোয়েশ্চেন হাউ ক্যান আই স্টে ইন দিস ওয়ার্ল্ড এন্ড কিপ মাই মাইন্ড ইন গড শ্রীরাম কৃষ্ণ কে ভেরি গুড ইলাস্ট্রেশন ইউ হ্যাভ টেরিবল ট্রু থেক you are working in the office or you are cooking you are mopping the floor or you are vacuuming or you are working in the garden but your whole mind is on the chutek that is the method to keep mind in god and work in this world we give a very good illustration Often the question is asked, how is that, <clears throat> that last moment alone to lift the mind to the divine? That the last moment comes only from long experience through life. We train the mind throughout the life for the last moment. Otherwise, we fail to fix the mind on the divine when we are not interested in that subject at all. So that training makes us fix, fit to fix the mind on divine at the last moment. But as you have seen the baseball players or the soccer players, before the game starts, they go for workout. They stretch, they run, they do all sorts of things. But the first time, if you, without exercise, if you go and first throw balls 100 miles in speed, your muscles will torn. They train, they make all this preparation so that they can throw 100 balls with 100 miles of speed. A lot of preparation those pitchers do. The batting practice, pitching practice, you have seen before the game, they go. Not that all of a sudden, before they, well, they're losing the muscles in the, in the in dugout, they are in the, in the, they are before the reliever comes. They go and throw balls to loosen their muscles. Preparation. Look, these people. Preparation. We see it. Same thing about life. We need preparation. If we have terrible attachment for this world, at the time of death, there will be a tug of war. Death is pulling one day, one side, and then attachment is pulling the other side. That is a miserable death. We see some people, oof, tremendous clinging to life, clinging to family, attachment, money, wealth. Oh, I am dying, I am dying. They are so afraid to die. At the same time, I have seen some swamis. People get beaming with joy. The face is so luminous. Swami Ranganathanandaji Ji compared, he did it a very nice, the, he compared the Greek attitude and the, and the Hindu attitude. Normal fear in death, in respect of death, we all have, but the obsessive fear will not be there. That is the weakness of ancient Greek thought. Several writers on Greek culture have mentioned this. The Greeks loved life, loved action, loved energy. Everything dynamic they loved, but they could not reconcile with old age and death. And the vital energy was squeezed out of them by a force which they did not know. They remained forever unreconciled to death. That is the limitation of the Greek thought. That is why they could not appreciate Socrates, who understood the nature of death, that he is truly mortal, 
that the body alone dies and not the self. That understanding came to Socrates, but the Greeks never understood Socrates. They threatened him, charged him with misleading the youth of his days, and made him drink poison. And that noblest Greek died at the hands of his own countrymen. Therein, you see that the classical Greek culture could not understand the nature of death, could not understand the dimension which Socrates spoke of, that essentially the self is immortal. And he expressed this truth at the time of drinking the poison with an absolutely calm mind, serene mind. He drank that poison, consoling the people, young and old around him. One of them, Crito, an old friend, put a question to Socrates just when he was drinking hemlock, that poison. In dialogue of Plato, you get the picture. Crito asked Socrates, Socrates, how shall we bury you? Socrates smiled. The man who is going to die wrote a gentle, wore a gentle smile and said, you must first catch me, the real me, before you ask this question. That was the first sentence he spoke. The second sentence was, be of good cheer, Crito. You refer to the body as to the body do with it as you do with other people. The same idea you find here. You, when you face death, understand that death is only of the body. We merely reject the body. The Greek culture and the Western culture, the subject of death was very little understood. But this is being corrected now with the practical spread of Vedantic ideas. People are realizing more and more the Indian thinking in regard to death. You know, it is very, very interesting about death. I remember I was serving a monk in 1960s. He had a stroke, paralyzed. And it was a government public hospital. There are 20 beds. This side 10 beds, this side 10 beds. Big room. And every two, three beds, there is a ceiling fan. That Swami's name was Swami Purushottamananda. He was a disciple of Holy Mother. So I used to go pick up his laundry, that hospital, PG hospital. Presidency General Hospital was very close to our ashram. So I used to go and pick his clothes and wash and keep to return to them, to return to him. And almost every day I used to go and see him. Very good shabby. Do you know what happened? Early in the morning, the man who is paralyzed cannot get up. He just got up and sat. And he said, hey, bed number five, hey, bed number, I think his bed number was four. Hey, bed number five, hey, bed number three, mother has come, I am going. He called these two other patients to his next two beds and just collapsed on his bed. God. I still remember I carried his body to Kavadatala, South Calcutta, that crematorium. Oof, I still remember nearly two and a half, three miles we carried his body with wooden cart. Several monks we carried his body. What a wonderful death. Mother has come, I am going. The person paralyzed cannot move. That is what a wonderful death. <clears throat> In the Isha Upanishad, the last three, four verses, you will find the Hindu way of death. When death comes, how they pray. <clears throat> Let me realize the supreme reality behind the sun. Behind the universe, I have lived my life. Now death has come. Let this body be dissolved into the components through the agency of fire, O oh mind, 
think of the good deeds you have done. Kruto smara, kritanga smara, kruto smara, kritanga smara. Think of it, what you have done in your life. And depart. As I sometimes say, this world is a vacation village. You may hear for 80 years, 90 years, you will have to go one day. Try to gather something so that you will be happy <clears throat> in afterlife. Death is a fact. In 11th chapter, Krishna says, Kaloshmi lokaksha krit pravidduham. I am the mighty world destroy time. I am here to destroy the world. That is said in the Kurukshetra, at the battlefield, on the chariot, Krishna declared, You are seeing these 18 million people, I have already killed them. <laughs> they are all dead. I sucked all their longevity. I am God. I have come here to just have the established righteousness. These are all unrighteous people. Arjuna, fight. Just be the witness. I have already killed them. If you do not fight, even they will be killed. Next verse. Yam yam bapi smaran bhavam tejitan tikali varam tam tam viti kunti asadata asadata dvabo bhavitaha. Remembering at the end of life, whatever object, divine form, one leaves the body, that ultimate reality alone is reached by him or her, O son of Kunti, because of one's constant thought of the object. First, let me tell you a story of King Bharata. They call it Jada Bharata. This king went to the forest, leading a retired life, spending his time in meditation and prayer. He was seated on the bank of a river. All of a sudden, a deer jumped a small stream who was attacked by a lion. So deer jumped over the river and came to the other side. That deer was pregnant and gave birth to a cub, baby deer, and the mother died. Seeing that newborn deer, Bharata was very touched. He was so affectionate to that deer he took the deer and took to his cottage and raised it. <coughs> Just parents raised their children. And gradually he becomes very much attached to that deer. At the time of death, he was thinking about the deer and he was born as a deer. But he had the knowledge. He did not lose his memory. But in dear body, he was thinking, my attachment caused this kind of life. Then, after the dear life passed, he was born as a dumb person, cannot talk. But he was a man of knowledge. He had full wisdom inside, but he cannot talk. So the king used him as a pal palanquin bearer, which is in the Purana, in the Padma Purana. Palanquin bearer. And eventually he got his liberation. You remember Swami Vivekananda used to teach Sri Ramakrishna, sir, you will think so much about me. You will be born as a, <laughs> as a deer like the king Bharata. Then Sri Ramakrishna was very much worried. He ran to the temple. <laughs> he ran to the Kali temple. Mother Naren says this, what shall I do? 
ಮಾದಸಿ ಅವನು ಯು ಸಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇನ್ ದೆಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಸಾಪಲ್ಸ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೊ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಬಾಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಮಿಜಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ಯು ಸಿ ಮಾದರ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇನ್ ಯು ಐ ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಸಿ ಯುವರ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಐ ಸಿ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಐ ಡೋ ನಾಟ್ ಸಿ ನರೇಂದ್ರ ದತ್ತ ಎ ಬಾಯ್ ನೋ ಐ ಡೋ ನಾಟ್ ಸಿ ದಟ್ ಐ ಸಿ ಗಾಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಕಾಕ್ರೋಚ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಎ ಫ್ರೇಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಂಬಲ್ ಬಿ ಸೊ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಎ ಬಾಂಬಲ್ ಬಿ this burst reminds us the transformation comes from within nandikeshwar he meditated on shiva so much that he got the form of shiva how meditation can change a person's inside sometimes outside shiva meditated on parvati so what had become he became ardhanari shara hap shiva hap parvati these are the all the stories in our puranas how meditation can transform <coughs> in this connection i shall re- sometimes some people think at the time of death we shall manage you know i shall read a passage from nikilanand wrote it the hindu scriptures lay great stress on the thought and the state of mind at the time of death as determining the future of the soul thought is endowed with self creative power our inner being changes into that of which we incessantly think with faith and devotion our inner being changes thinking thinking think look at that he recently he just he started in santa barbara the boy took the gun and just started to shoot five six people are killed several people are injured it came from the thinking of that boy i must destroy i must destroy then what did he do he took the gun and shoot himself and killed himself bus it comes from thinking thought process is very very important our inner being changes into that of which we incessantly think with faith and devotion we become that on which we keep our minds fixed and to which we constantly aspire the ever recurring thought of a lifetime whether good or bad presents itself vividly at the time of death we cannot get rid of it as the sleeping man cannot get rid of his dream since the character character of the body next to be attained as is determined by what a man thinks intensely at the time of death he should always think of god if he wants to attain him after leaving the body this body of the this idea of the gita is not analogous to the indulgence and facilities of popular religion the absolute absolution the absolution and last unction of the priest does not make death edifying and the spiritual after and underlying the profane life even while the priest performs his rites the dying man may be cherishing in his mind the thought in which he has indulged all through his life <coughs> <coughs> do you know what he is talking about he is talking about if you perform shraddha ceremony somebody dies the priest will say oh your father will go to heaven give money i shall perform this sacrifice no way it does not go that way how will if i go there you know if i do this i shall be <laughs> i uh, some of my friends are telling them me that in kumbhela in bhuvan in hardwar last time i think 2007 
Yeah. Then he was telling that, Swami, please come and have bath in the Kumbh Mela, in the Jeep, in the Ganges, and you will be free from sin. Uncle I did not commit so much sin. You go, and those who committed sin, let them go <laughs> and take bath there. <laughs> They're telling you will be sinless if you bathe there. Uncle, if you had that faith, <laughs> I would go there. I do not believe all those things. Those who believe, that is good. I believe in karma. And I believe in my thoughts. What I am thinking. You know, this is the beauty of Vedanta. All responsibility on your shoulder. Do not blame others for your misery or for your happiness. You got it by your karma. Your success, your failure are yours. I did not work for your success or your failure. You did it. This aspect of Vedanta is very, very interesting. In the Shankha Prabhupada Sutra, there is, a, there is a story. Once a king, old king was dying, and he was thinking about his wife at the time of death. So in the next birth, he became a princess of a, he became a woman, and was born as a princess of another king. He, all the, these are all the stories of Puranas, anyhow. But, Remember, the Krishna is going to more about it that how to focus the mind at the time of death. The preparation, he will tell us more verses about how to prepare, how to keep the mind. And sometimes Sri Ramakrishna says, a man who is dying, his children are telling him, Father, please chant God's name. Oh, I mean, auto kotha bolte parina. I have no energy to speak so many words. But let's chant God's name. Well, I cannot teach you. <laughs> then he will say, Oh, Pradipya Shalte Chabai to Komiya De. But the oil cup is full of oil and here is the weak. Well, remove, reduce the weak a little bit more so that your oil will be less consumed. At the time of death, he is telling his relatives. But these are the people, worldly people. Psh. Whatever may be the divine form that a devotee meditates upon at the time of death, he or she attains that particular form. So in any religion, Whenever there is this kind of the lifting of the mind to a higher level and concentrating on some divine truth, the same result occurs. So it is a general statement. Those who forsake the body at the time of death by thinking of a divine form, whatever might be the form of divinity in front, they achieve that very divinity. Why? They achieve by constantly thinking of that particular bhava, theme, idea, the mind becomes impressed by it. And therefore, in the next life, he or she achieves the divine unity. This is the faith of all devotees in every religion. Therefore, that being true, in order to prepare our minds to be able to orient at the time of death in that direction, we have to practice it quite early enough. A wise person will not depend upon a chance remembrance of the divine. He or she will try to remember him in life always so that he or she will remember the divine at the time of death. There is a story in the Purana also. A man was a robber. Ungulimal. At the time of death, he repeated Narayana, Narayana. Narayana was the name of his elder son. So, so what happened? From heaven, Narayana sent his messenger to pick up this man. And the god of death, Jama, also sent his messenger to pick up the soul of this man. <coughs> so these two messengers came. 
One came from heaven and another came from the abode of death. But what is the matter? This man was a robber, committed so many sins, killed so many people. Then Vishnu, Dut, the messenger of Krishna, Vishnu said, no, 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 no. At the time of death, he repeated Narayana. <laughs> so he must go to heaven. Anyhow, those are all stories in the Puranas. Means, Chan Kachdi, at the time of death, and think of that. It's for the reason in our tradition, when a person, when you see a person is dying, we repeat God's name. So that with that thought, he can depart from this world. Thank you. Masatoma Sadgamayo, Tomasoma Jyotir Gamayo, Mrittorma Amritam Gamayo, Abhiravin Mayedi, Rudrajate Dokshinam Mukam, Tinamam Pahinityam, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, lead us from death to immortality, light us through and through, and guide us evermore with thy loving presence. Peace, 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 people.